Hey you guys, this is Jessica. I know I'm here at Rax Tracks recording for another episode of What's That Sound with Reverb, and today we are breaking down the drum sound you hear in the Black Keys song, Tighten Up. Kenny Takahashi engineered it, Chad Blake mixed it, it sounds big as hell, it is only three mics, we're gonna figure out how to do it. So Patrick Carney is the drummer of the Black Keys, and to get his sound for our drums, we used a Ludwig Vista-like kick drum with no resonant head, nothing on the front, and we placed a pillow inside the kick, just slightly resting up against the batter head. For our snare, we used a Ludwig Black Beauty snare drum, and then K-Dark Zildjian hi-hats. All right, so for this sound, it's a really crazy sounding drum, but the miking is actually super simple, right? It, it's kind of a play on like a classic Glyn Johns technique, right? So Glyn Johns, uh, you usually do an overhead microphone, single overhead that is, that is right above the snare. You do a mic that is over, like looking over the kit uh, on the side by where the floor tom is and you use a kick drum mic. No snare drum mic. It's super uh, important that all those three mics are in phase with each other. So what you do is you measure the distance from the snare drum to the top mic, and you make sure that's exactly the distance from the capsule to capsule uh, to the side mic, and you make sure that's the same distance to the, the kick drum mic. The kick drum mic is not quite as important to be at the same distance, but it can, especially if you're gonna use a lot of the kick drum sound from the overhead mics, it can be really helpful. Now, they altered that slightly in this just from, from what information we could figure out and we kind of liked the idea of it. So they did the side mic the same, did the kick mic the same. The overhead mic, they just kind of stuck in front of the kit, right? And what you get from that is you get a little bit more kick drum in that microphone, right? Because it's, it's getting closer to the front of the head uh, of the kick drum. And you also get less hi-hat, which we were into because we knew how much we were gonna compress this sound. Once we got this drum sound all processed and, and put together and we listened to the original, what we noticed was that ours was a little bit duller and a little bit less lively than theirs. So to combat that, we took our, our big baffles that we have in our live room and on one side we have absorption on them, which is usually what we use to kind of control the drum sound. On the other side we have hardwood, super reflective, super bright. So all we did was flip those baffles around and they gave a ton of extra energy and a ton of extra brightness and length to all these drums that made it perfect. Kick drum was a uh, Sound Deluxe iFET. It's basically a Neumann FET 47 clone. Um, we had that maybe four or five feet off of the kick drum. So it's, it's capturing a lot of the rest of the kit, right? We are filtering off a bunch of high end because we don't necessarily need a lot of like snare drum and hi-hat to come from this microphone. So that is going through a Neve 1073. It's going through no compressor. Right, and it is then getting processed a little in Pro Tools after the fact. The only kind of trick to this drum sound is uh, Chad Blake very famously uses uh, Sans Amp pedals all over, right? Um, he, he used to do it with the pedal, now he probably does it with the, with the plug-in, I'm assuming, but either way, we had a Sans Amp pedal today, so we, we molted our signal out before it went into Pro Tools, and we ran it through our Sans Amp pedal, right? Uh, this is basically an amp simulation pedal, but it has a really, really specific, unique sound, and it adds a lot of character to this drum. So let's listen to just that. Now, not only does it have a unique sound to the kick drum, it is bringing out a lot of snare drum, right? And it's making the snares kind of sound cool. So we're, we're gonna use that to our advantage, right? We're, we're gonna keep that as part of the snare sound uh, as well. Uh, let's listen to the kick and the Sans Amp together.
they complement each other really well, right? They just make it have like a, a sound to it, right? It's not just any old kick drum. It has a really specific sound. Uh, it's gonna fit really well with our other two mics. So let's take a look at the first overhead. So this mic is a Sheps V4U, a uh, small diaphragm condenser, right? So again, it's right in front of the kit. We're processing it heavily, right? We're doing a lot to make it sound the way that it sounds. So we have an EQ on it that's adding a little bit of low mids, right? Because it just needed a little bit of a, of a push there. It's also filtering off the super, super sub frequencies, which we want to leave the kick drums to, to produce. We also added uh, a bit of distortion with a decapitator. Right, uh, that is something that we're doing on on all of the mics, but we were we were kind of pushing this one very specifically so that it would it would crunch up when the when the snare and the kick would would hit. We're also adding a bit of compression with a Devil Lock. Right, that is a really really aggressive compressor. Um, we're doing it in parallel, so we're only using a little bit of it, but it's adding a ton of length and a ton of weight to this sound. And then we are crunching that up with a satin tape emulator that's taken off some of the transients and just making it generally sound a little tapier, a little vibier. Let's listen to this drum sound alone without any of those things. It's cool, but I don't know if it's the most exciting sound in the world. Let's add all of our processing on. A lot more going on there, right? Let's, uh, let's check out our other overhead. So this is our quote unquote overhead, right? It was looking across the kit. This was an SM57. We didn't match these, right? They, they weren't matched. They didn't sound matched in the record, right? The, the right side and the left side sounded very, very different, right? That's part of what makes the drum sound kind of unique is that it, it sounds really, really weird spatially. And so we, we tried to achieve that, right? We used a 57. It already had a lot of mid range, but we added a little bit of extra like low mids with, a, with an SSL EQ. And this was going through a 1073 preamp, right? So it's a cheap mic, but it's going through a nice preamp that gives it a lot of nice, nice character. We ran it through basically the same processing as the other overhead. Uh, so let's listen without the processing and then we'll check it out with. fine. It's boring. It's not that cool. It's a boring, kind of boring sound. Uh, so let's add in all our processing and see how it turned out. Ton of, ton of character, right? It gives a lot of, a lot of weight to it, a lot of body. Um, it has a really cool attack. Let's hear the two overheads together. It has a crazy spatial sound to it, right? It has a lot of width to the snare, right? Because it, even though we made sure that's perfectly in phase, there's a ton of crazy differences in what type of mic we were using and what processing we're doing. Where the, the left side, we are pushing the distortion a lot harder than the right side. So it kind of creates this interesting panning uh, through the duration of the snare drum. There's like interesting panning that's happening because it's reacting to the two microphones very differently. Uh, now we did some processing on the entire kit as a whole, right? The reason we did this was because we knew, again, we knew Chad Blake mixed it and we know that this is what he tends to do. So let's listen to this mix with the, all of the drum bus stuff turned off and then let's add them in one by one so we can hear what each, each thing is doing. So here is just the drums alone with nothing on the drum bus. It's not a bad sound. It's, it, it is a technically, technically proficient drum sound is what I would call it, right? It sounds like someone who knows how to record drums well did a good job recording drums. That is a boring drum sound as far as I'm concerned, right? We can't stop there. So let's add in a decapitator, right? That's gonna add a ton of distortion to this. Immediately, it starts to sound like it's falling apart, but that's kind of interesting, right? It's kind of, kind of, uh, 
exciting immediately, right? It still is maybe a little bit too transient, so let's add in our satin, which is a, a plug-in that is a tape emulator, and we're using it just to take off some of the uh, some of the transients. It's more distortion, basically, right? That's all it's doing is just taking off some of the transients. It's adding a little bit more distortion, a little bit more excitement. Uh, let's add our Oxford inflator, right? Uh, Oxford Inflator, I don't know what it does. I'll be honest, I have no idea. Uh, I don't know that anyone knows exactly what it does. Um, it, it's, it definitely uh, limits the dynamics of the sound in some capacity. Uh, it definitely tends to add a little bit of mid-range to the sound. It tends to make the sound more exciting. Past that, you can tell me in the comments what that plugin does. But it sounds good. It's just more exciting. Just sounds better. I don't know why. It just sounds better. We're going to add a distressor to that, right? Because we're, we're losing a little bit of attack and we need a little bit of extra, uh, extra attack on that. So let's add our distressor. So that's, uh, that's adding a little bit of extra, extra punch to this. Now, this drum sound is obviously a little out of control. And so to deal with that, we are going to use a four-band multi, uh, multi-band compressor, right? This, again, is a thing that we're doing because we know Chad Blake mixed this, and we know that he tends to use a lot of multi-band compressors on, like, his mix buses and stuff like that. It allows you to achieve uh, balance in crazy sources. Right, so if you have this really unwieldy drum sound, it has these big surges and different frequencies and stuff like that. Uh, adding a multiband compressor, it can help kind of tame that and and let you kind of achieve like cram more than you would normally be able to uh, into into the limited real estate that is that is your your track. Uh, let's hear it with our multiband compressor on. All right, and last but not least, we're gonna add just a little bit of uh, subtractive EQ uh, just to control some of the mid-range that's starting to get a little mid-rangey. Um, we're gonna scoop a little bit of that out with our FabFilter EQ3. That's the drum sound. Let's see how it all sounds put together. That was how we got the drum sound for Tighten Up by the Black Keys. Let us know in the comments what other songs you'd like to see us break down, and we'll see you next time. Gosh, well, who does the, the wind up first? I mean, you wound up last time, so just assume. <laughs>